News at noon starts right now. A whole list of criminal charges awaits a woman who deputies say was caught with a whole load of weapons in a stolen car. That woman arrested after a chase that stretched from far west end of Bear County all the way into the city limits. Katrina Weber tells us why deputies say they are not done searching yet. You can tell by the way it's parked in the south side neighborhood that someone got out of this car in a hurry. Bear County deputies, with help from San Antonio police, moved quickly too, trying to stop the two people who were inside it. With a canine on the ground and a helicopter in the air, they went after the passenger who headed down an alley near East Amber Place and Walhalla Street after four this morning. But they didn't find her. The driver didn't get very far at all. They caught her right away, although she had been running from them before the car ever stopped. Deputies say she led them on a 15 minute long chase. Well, this was the end of the road for the driver. Deputies say the beginning was actually 20 miles away. That's where the chase started out near Highway 90 and Highway 211 in far west Bear County. They had first spotted the pair driving there in what turned out to be a stolen car. And they say that is not the only thing the suspects may have taken. They told us they found about a half dozen weapons along with other people's ID cards inside the vehicle. Investigators believe the two women also were in the process of breaking into other cars just before they broke and tried to run. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cam, enjoyed a little of rain the end of last week. Now we just got some nice clouds and some temperatures in the 80s. We'll take that. Start Please tell us, Justin, there's more rain to come this week. Not necessarily this work week, but as we get into the weekend, perhaps. And with that being said, we do actually have a couple of very small showers on the radar right now uh, that we do need to let you know about. We've got some clouds trying to bubble up into these little pop up showers. But if you're underneath one, it's good news. And uh, we're seeing that uh, happen there in southeastern parts of Uvalde County. There's one uh, little shower there south of Medina Lake and another one right around Bernie. Let's zoom in that uh, on that one near Bernie and see how close it is uh, to downtown. It looks like it's just south and east of town. So. Uh, you may be missing out on the rain if you're within Bernie proper, but north of Fair Oaks Ranch, right there along the, uh, the, the Bear County line along I-10, a little bit of rain falling just south of Highway 46. If we're going to see anything today, it's going to be these very small pop-up showers, but we are noticing that just enough instability out there to get some of this going. And right around the city of Medina as well, we've got a little shower that's popped up there uh, right over the city, though, so you are getting... A little bit of a downpour in Medina. As far as Bear County goes in San Antonio, we're not seeing anything right now, but it gives us a little bit of hope, right? We see the clouds out there, and yeah, some of these, again, trying to bubble up into these uh, small showers. 89 right now in town, 93 Pleasanton, 88 in Hondo, 84 in Kerrville. Closing in on 90 here in town. It's still going to be a hot day. Temperatures make their way up to around 95 or so, but we have added in. 10% uh, chance of rain throughout the afternoon. Temperatures make their way up to about uh, 95 or so for a high and then down into the 70s tonight. Uh, should be another comfortable morning tomorrow. And no, there's not a lot of rain chances uh, in the forecast this work week, as I said, but the weekend looking a little more interesting. We'll have more on that here in just a couple minutes, guys. It's a new week, folks, so that means we have a new list of closures for you. Be on the lookout if you have to travel overnight, because that's where we're going to see a lot of closures taking place. We're going to start here along I-10 over on the east side of Bear County. Bridge work is taking place. This will begin Monday, September 18th, and wrap on September 22nd. That's the end of the work week. As I mentioned, overnight, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning, alternating full closures on the main lanes in both directions, east and west, at FM 1518. Let's take a drive back here into town. 10 over on the west side of San Antonio. Road work is listed by TechStop. This will begin Tuesday, September 19th. Again, that's overnight, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Drivers will see a single northbound main lane closure from Old Pearsall Road to Medina Base Road. One last here, one last traffic closure for you here along I-35 on the northeast side of San Antonio. Drilling work is taking place. This is a lot of information, so plan ahead. This is current, and it should wrap on Saturday, September 23rd, at least a portion of this project. Overnight, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Drivers, we will see a full closure on I-35 southbound. That's the frontage road, exit ramp, and entrance ramp. That's between Randolph Boulevard to Frat Road. A lot of information coming at you right now, but if you scan this QR code, that information will be at your fingertips. We have a full list of all the closures on our website. That QR code takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. Full list of closures is posted on there, so plan your commute ahead of time and know what to expect before you go. 
Police are in the process of tracking down a pair of suspects after they say the duo hit two jewelry stores in two days. Officer tell us one of the burglaries happened on the 16th of August at a James Avery store on Southeast Military Drive. Police say early that morning, two people forced their way into the store through the back door, stole several pieces of jewelry. That was the second one. Police said they believe the burglars also stole from a James Avery on the far west side the day before. If you can help police with this chase, with this case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. A five-year plan to attack back against violence being unveiled by Metro Health and dozens of community organizations that created it. That plan focusing on gun violence, youth violence, domestic and sexual violence. One strategy includes a youth ambassador program where young people encourage their peers to stay away from violent activities. Another one would create a hub for violence prevention so that people can access resources faster and easier kind of one-stop shop where whether it's a concerned citizen or you know somebody who's serving youth or can reach out and say hey what resources are there who do I call what can I do Metro Health says they'll send the violence prevention plan to city leaders in coming weeks after reviewing the plan city leaders will then decide how to support these ideas Seven Americans now on a plane on their way home from Iran after they were unable to leave the country. Five of them were behind bars, but now the U.S. has reached a deal with Iran that includes unfreezing $6 billion. ABC's Ike Jachi with why some lawmakers are criticizing the agreement, even accusing the Biden administration of paying a ransom. After spending time behind bars in Iran's notorious Evin prison, five Americans are coming home. Last month, the U.S. striking a deal with Iran, where both countries will each exchange five prisoners. The deal also allows Iran to access roughly $6 billion in frozen Iranian oil revenue. The wife and mother of two of the inmates were also allowed to leave Iran as part of the deal. They were not imprisoned, but had been blocked from leaving the country. So a total of seven Americans are coming home. It means that husbands and wives, fathers and children, grandparents can hug each other again, can see each other again, can be with each other again. So it's a day that I'm grateful for. The U.S. identifying three of the five Iranian-American prisoners as Siamak Namazi, Murad Tabaz, and Imad Sargi, each sentenced to 10 years behind bars on convictions of espionage, which the prisoners and the U.S. deny. Many Republicans have been blasting the deal since its initial announcement, likening it to paying a ransom, saying it will encourage future hostage-taking, and claiming it will boost Iran's economy. The deal also drawing criticism from a Democrat. Senate Intelligence Committee Chair Mark Warner on CBS questioning how the funds will be used. I want to hear what kind of constraints are being put on in this exchange. The White House promising those funds can only be used for humanitarian purposes. Now, as part of the prisoner swap, the five Iranians convicted or charged with crimes in the U.S. will be granted clemency. Two will be forced to return to Iran. The other three are lawfully allowed to remain in the U.S. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. A well-known member of a well-known family of lawyers now running for state office, Mark LaHood, now vying to be the representative for House District 121. He's the brother of former Bear County District Attorney Nico LaHood. He previously ran for office here in Bear County, trying to unseat DA Joe Gonzalez. Efforts underway to restore 11 miles of West Side Creek ways. Part of the goal also maintaining current flood control measures and improving water control and water quality. This will be the San Antonio River Authority and several partners will host a series of informational sessions coming up. Attendees are going to have a chance to learn more about the progress of their creeks in the neighborhoods and ask some questions, too. The first meeting is tonight at 6 o'clock at the San Antonio River Authority office. That's on East Gunther Street. You can take a look at the rest of the schedule on KSAT.com. Hey, coming up, people are excited. Cowboys get a home opener victory to stay undefeated, but they still got a little work to do on offense. A San Antonio food bank working year-round to provide meals for families in need. Who's those efforts now powered by volunteers and there's something for everyone who might want to help, including a chance to get your hands dirty.
It is Hunger Action Month, and we are exploring volunteer opportunities for the San Antonio Food Bank, including an opportunity for you to help grow crops. Tiffany Huerta takes us to the Mission San Juan Farm, where people grow thousands of pounds of food and donate it to families in our community. So this is just one of our native American squashes. It's like a butternut and it is delicious roasted. And it's one of the many foods grown at this historic farm on the south side of San Antonio. And these are uh, just some of the things that we distribute to families all throughout uh, our entire service area, which is well beyond San Antonio. Mitch Hagney with the San Antonio Food Bank took us around the Mission San Juan farm. This specific property that we're cultivating on has had crops growing on it for almost 300 years. We actually use the historic acequia that pulls water off of the San Antonio River. Last year, they produced more than 300,000 pounds of fruits and vegetables in this farm, and thousands more will grow in this field. We also have about five acres of peaches, uh, and then we have turnips, beets, radishes, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, all that we're going to be planting for the fall to hopefully get out to families that really need it through the rest of the year. It's a special place where you can volunteer. You're going to be doing things like weeding, mulching, but critically for us, harvesting. During the fall, volunteer days are every other weekend. And for us, uh, Hunger Action Month, which is all throughout September, is a critical time for the community to really pitch in and get involved. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. KSAC Community partnering with the San Antonio Food Bank to help squash hunger during Hunger Action Month. Join us for KSAC Community Town Hall this Friday, September 22nd. We're going to be speaking with leaders from the Food Bank and we're going to learn how anyone can give back. We will be live streaming the town hall on KSAT.com from 2.30 to 3.30 p.m. Friday afternoon. Just need a little rain for that garden that they're planting out there or the you know it's crops. I, we still need rain out at our place I, I was nice to get a little bit yeah it need was more. Uh, we would have liked to have seen a whole lot more over the weekend the good news is we are getting a few isolated showers out there right now we just sent a push alert to your phone to let you know yes there is some activity on radar we're gonna have a radar update for you coming up here in just a few minutes the aquifer is down six tenths of a foot to 629.9 and your pollen count looks a little more fallish, right? We've got uh, fall elm and ragweed showing up along with high counts of mold. More on that forecast coming up. Today is a day made for David Sears. It's Cheeseburgers in paradise. That's right, cheeseburger day. A little homage to Jimmy Buffett. SA Live, ready for it, Mike and Fiona are live at Historic Market Square. I don't see one. Where are they cooking? Are they on the grill? Where are they? <laughs> you know, we're going to be telling you about some great deals going on with cheeseburgers. Oh, okay. No, we're not cooking one on that, but you took the words out of my mouth with Cheeseburger in Paradise. Yeah. You know, yes. The song there, so. Okay, so we want to know what kind of cheese do you like on your cheeseburger? Ooh, and there are the choices on the screen. Scan that QR code mm. and weigh in. American Swiss Cheddar Provolone Pepper Jack Blue Cheese. Oh, it's so Pepper Jack for me. Is it? Mm. What I do like you think, blue David? Cheese. American. American? Mark American. Depends on, I, depends on the kind of burger, I know, too. you can't okay. pick one. I'm like, I'm You're okay. right. Because I like blue cheese on right there, lines, yeah. And you can vote. I bet American wins. Okay, we're out of time. Okay. We're out of time. We'll be back. <laughs> Justin? Oh. What you, huh? All. Oh. All. Oh, every Justin, every one, time. Just put all of them on there. Yeah. Uh, if I had to choose pepper jack, I like a little. If I'm paying for the burger, you want all the cheese. <laughs> all of it. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and add it on. I like it a little spicy sometimes. Pepper jack's a good choice. Uh, we have some showers and a few downpours trying to show up on radar, guys. A bit of a surprise, but great to see. I will caution you, though. We're talking about very little real estate here that's getting affected by this. Uh, but rain, nonetheless, on the radar is always a good thing. And let me show you where we're seeing some of these showers down around Uvalde. Southeastern portions of Uvalde County, we saw a little shower south of Medina Lake, one around Bernie. Unfortunately, with these kinds of showers, too, you'll see them build up last about five to ten minutes and then go away. Uh, but maybe you get lucky enough to be underneath one of them. Uh, so far, it doesn't look like these are really affecting anywhere uh, where there's uh, big populations. But around Medina, we did see that one shower uh, that popped up. It's trying to weaken a little bit, but affecting parts of town there. And then as uh, we go north up towards uh, Kerrville, starting to see a little shower take shape there, too. So maybe you get some rain uh, near downtown Kerrville. Also around Hunt, seeing a little shower there. We saw the one near Bernie. That one is uh, tracking east slowly, 
uh, building towards Bergheim there along Highway 46. May cross over Highway 46 there with a little bit of rain for you. And here around San Antonio, nothing yet, but does seem like we're starting to see maybe a few returns up there on the northwest side. All things we'll be watching. We have added in a 10% chance of rain today to account for these pop-up showers. And as we look at the rainfall since Friday, boy, uh, it has not been good to us. We have been very unlucky. Look how we were surrounded by the rain. Ozona, Junction, Austin, College Station, Houston, Victoria, Corpus Christi, all the way down to Laredo. They got rain. We did not. We were kind of in this hole. It's just the way it worked out. It's the luck of the draw. We've, it feels like we've had bad luck for some time now, right? And as you look at the last 22 months, we've had one, one or two months, I should say, that were above average. That's it. Otherwise, it has been below average each and every month. It's been a rough, rough stretch. And we're a little bit below average for this month as well. So at the moment, it continues. As we look outside, we do have an air quality issue today, a little bit of extra ozone, so we are in the unhealthy for those who are sensitive category. Heads up there. And as we go outside for you once again, uh, 89 here in San Antonio, 91 in New Braunfels, 89 in Seguin. Still a hot day, also a little humid at times, too. The heat index uh, is starting to jump up. Feels like 94 in New Braunfels. Here's a look at the cloud cover, and you can see these uh, cumulus clouds that have popped up, and then some of those trying to grow vertically and that's why we're getting some of those showers and uh, showers and downpours 84 in Kerrville 89 Gonzales 91 right now in Kennedy 93 in Pleasanton and right around 90 here in San Antonio we will be there soon as we look at the dew point trend uh, it was fairly low this morning we started off kind of nice but the dew points are starting to increase and as we go throughout the rest of the week expect some increasing humidity. So our forecast today, 95 at 4 o'clock, 10% chance of rain. We'll see temperatures in the 80s this evening with mostly clear skies. And uh, the extended forecast shows high pressure actually tries to build in a little bit. This makes it even warmer by Wednesday and Thursday. Good news here, system moves across the country by the weekend. Pushes a front close to us, doesn't necessarily push it through, but I think it gets it close enough to where we get to add in some rain chances on Sunday. So upper 90s this week, lots of heat and fall officially begins on Saturday and that's followed up by that weak front getting close enough to bring some rain chances on Sunday. Guys. Thank you, Justin. And hey, the Cowboys get another win thanks mostly to their defense and we've got a little bit of good news for the Texans, but still a lot coming up. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. On moment for the Dallas Cowboys, AT&T Stadium hosting the New York Jets. Both teams want to know. Cowboys opening drive, Dak Prescott, Jake Ferguson. Where is he? Jake gets in. Stretch right there. 7 nothing. Jets opening drive. Cowboys linebacker Mike Parsons runs right through the line. Sack Zach Wilson. The lion is roaring. The Jets went three and out. Dallas up 7-0 after the first quarter. Second quarter, Jets down 10-0. They fired up the engine, though. Zach Wilson throws it to Garrett Wilson, slips a tackle, and see ya. 68-yard touchdown, longest of his career. Jets are down 10-7. Dallas answers back next drive. Dak to rookie tight end Luke Schoonmaker, one yard, his first as a pro. Dallas leads 18-7 after two. Point conversion is good. They got a penalty, so they got to go from the one. They decided to go for two and got it. All right, third quarter, Jets give the ball to running back Dalvin Cook. He meets Micah Parsons. They are both going down, and Parsons just rips the ball right out of his arm as it goes down. But he picks it up, heads the other way, thinks he's got a touchdown, but he doesn't because he was ruled down, credited with the recovery fumble, but not the touchdown. Dallas ball, but they had to settle for a field goal. They're second to the third, and the Cowboys are up 24 to 10 after three. We go to the fourth quarter. DD strikes again. Jerron Curse picks off Zach Wilson. Curse returns it 32 yards to the Jets' 17-yard line. Once again, Dallas held to a field goal, extending their lead to 30-10. to 10. Couldn't score, but six points off of four turnovers. Wilson had no chance yesterday afternoon. Less than seven minutes in the game. Parsons sacks him again, his second on the day. The third for the Dallas D. So let's check out the final for you with those four turnovers. Cowboys win it, though, 30-10. to 10. Cowboys will hit the road next week, take on the Arizona Cardinals Sunday at 325 at State Farm Stadium in Tempe.
All right, down the highway to Houston, Texans had their own op home opener at NRG Stadium, hosting the Indianapolis Colts. Quarterback Anthony Richardson, the fourth overall pick, right to work, dancing in the open field. A couple moves right there, like that, touchdown. That made it 14-0, Andy. Houston then put up a drive. C.J. Stroud, back to pass, finds Nico Collins in the back of the end zone. Got it. Touchdown, Stroud's first TD of his NFL career. Anthony Richardson had to leave the game with a concussion in the second quarter. I think he suffered during that last touchdown run. In the fourth quarter, Stroud finds Tank Dell, and that is a nice move, and that is his second TD pass. Unfortunately for Houston, it was not enough. They end up dropping to the Colts 31-20. Houston now 0-2 on the season. Stroud finished with 384 yards passing, two touchdowns. He has a positive perspective on starting the season with those two straight losses, though. No one said it was going to be easy. You know what I mean? Like I think uh, the hope that we brought the city from the draft and from all season moves and everything, like it, it got the buzz going, and I think that was great. And I think it, it, it should continue because this team is we're we're, we're a couple plays away, man, from winning, winning a lot of games here. And I, I don't think that it should be easy. All right, so CJ and his crew will be in Jacksonville next Sunday to take on the Jaguars. Both teams now 0-2, so I, something will give. I think Tank has got the absolute perfect name for a football player. That's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. I like that. Tank. New today at 5. For years, doctors have been recommending that you lower your salt intake. But when you cut the salt, you also cut an important mineral in your body that your body needs, iodine. We're going to tell you how to get rid of the sodium and still get your serving of iodine today after Entertainment Tonight.